I try to be a good father, give my kids mulligans, work nights to pay for their text messaging, take them to swimsuit shoots, but compared with Dick Hoyt, I stink. 85 times he's pushed his disabled son, Rick, 26.2 miles in marathons. Eight times he's not only pushed him 26.2 miles in a wheelchair, but also towed him 2.4 miles in a dinghy while swimming and pedaled him 112 miles in a seat on the handlebars, all on the same day. Dix also pulled him cross-country skiing, taken him on his back mountain climbing, and once hauled him across the U.S. on a bike. Makes taking your son bowling look a little lame, right? And what has Rick done for his father? Not much, except save his life. This love story began in Winchester, Massachusetts, 43 years ago, when Rick was strangled by the umbilical cord during birth, leaving him brain damaged and unable to control his limbs. He'll be a vegetable the rest of his life. Dick says doctors told him and his wife, Judy, when Rick was nine months old, put him in an institution. But the Hoyts weren't buying it. They noticed the way Rick's eyes followed them around the room. When Rick was 11, they took him to the engineering department at Tufts University and asked him if there was anything to help the boy communicate. No way, Dick, Dick says he was told. There's nothing going on in his brain. Tell him a joke, Dick countered. They did. Rick laughed. Turns out a lot was going on in his brain. Rigged up with a computer that allowed him to control the cursor by touching a switch with the side of his head, Rick was finally able to communicate. First words, go Bruins. And after a high school classmate was paralyzed in an accident and the school organized a charity run for him, Rick pecked out, Dad, I want to do that. Yeah, right. How was Dick, a self-described porker who never ran more than a mile at a time, going to push his son five miles? Still, he tried. Then it was me who was handicapped, Dick says. I was sore for two weeks. That day changed Rick's life. Dad, he typed, when we were running, it felt like I wasn't disabled anymore. And that sentence changed Dick's life. He became obsessed with giving Rick that feeling as often as he could. He got into such hard belly shape that he and Rick were ready to try the 1979 Boston Marathon. No way, Dick was told by a race official. The Hoyts weren't quite a single runner, and they weren't quite a wheelchair competitor. For a few, few years, Dick and Rick just joined the massive field and ran anyway. Then they found a way to get them into the race officially. In 1983, they ran another marathon so fast, they made the qualifying time for Boston the following year. Then somebody said, hey, Dick, why not a triathlon? How's a guy who never learned to swim and hadn't ridden a bike since he was six going to haul his 110-pound kid through a triathlon? Still, Dick tried. Now they've done 212 triathlons, including four grueling 15-hour Ironmans in Hawaii. It must be a buzzkill to be a 25-year-old stud getting passed by an old guy towing a grown man in a dinghy, don't you think? Hey, Dick, why not see how you do on your own? No way, he says. Dick does it purely for, quote, the awesome feeling he gets seeing Rick with a cantaloupe-sized smile as they run, swim, and ride together. This year, at ages 65 and 43, Dick and Rick finished their 24th Boston Marathon in 5,083rd place out of more than 20,000 starters. Their best time? Two hours, 40 minutes in 1992, only 35 minutes off the world record, which, in case you don't keep track of these things, happens to be held by a guy who was not pushing another man in a wheelchair at the time. No question about it, Rick types. My dad is the father of the century. And Dick got something else out of all this, too. Two years ago, he had a mild heart attack during a race. Doctors found that one of his arteries was 95% clogged. If you hadn't been in such great shape, one doctor told him, you probably would have died 15 years ago. So in a way, Dick and Rick saved each other's life. Rick, who has his own apartment, he gets home care and works in Boston, and Dick, retired from the military and living in Holland, Massachusetts, always find ways to be together. They give speeches around the country and compete in some backbreaking race every weekend, including this Father's Day. That night, Rick will buy his dad dinner, but the thing he really wants to give him is a gift he can never buy. The thing I'd most like, Rick types, is that my dad sit in the chair and I push him once. Now, folks, I don't know if you, uh, you got the import of that story, but that, to me, is one of the greatest, greatest examples of what we're talking about, this kind of love that, that 
doesn't care about itself, but just wants to give, give, and, and give somebody the ability to dance. You know, like, like that, that that song. This this guy Rick, he's forty three years old, can't move a limb, but he dances every weekend with his dad. He dances because he is able to experience life because somebody stepped outside of themselves and gave him time and effort and love and care and respect enough to say your life is important. What a what an amazing story of of just that and that's a that's a small example. That's a one person changing one person's life. What an amazing microcosm of what we're talking about here with the kind of love we're, we're, we're dealing with. And, you know, in the scriptures we just read, uh, it talks about what Jesus gave. Now, Jesus, when you, you multiply that by 25 billion, okay, because Jesus gave his life so that the world could dance. That's what he did. He gave his life so the world could have that cantaloupe-sized smile on their face as they come from a, a point of being disabled through sin and death to a point of being able to, to, to live in, in a beautiful, righteous, wonderful society. That's what Jesus did. That's what this love that we're talking about has the power to do. When we say, what does love accomplish? Man, it accomplishes more than you could ever even begin to imagine. So folks, as we take this break, think about how is this kind of love active in your life? This is Jonathan and Rick with Christian Questions on News Talk 102.3 FM, WXLM. What does love accomplish? We'll be right back. 